Hello, welcome to Bork Business. You can't get rid of us. We're like Haley's Comet, but we come back far more frequently than 86 years. Absolutely. In this week's episode, we're going to talk about growth. We're not going to talk about personal growth because obviously we Sumi, haven't had any Sumi has never had any. I'm stay, I'm, I've stayed at 14 <laughs> all my life. And I'm retrograding. <laughs> you are retrograding. So last week we ended, oh, by the way, hello podcast listeners. Say hello to them. Uh, hello everybody. Uh, hello my brother. Yes, uh, oh, there's, yeah. another, there's another slandering coming. Right, go on. And what can you say about him quickly? Uh, oh, that, no. We did dork last week. Oh, he's a and dork. He, yeah, that's... That, that, that's Nearly Stiff. not strong enough. <laughs> Boring. Oh no, well also, let's be frank, everyone thought he was aloof when he was younger. Hey. <laughs> we like the aloof. We, well, without doubt. Yeah, but we then all we... the women fancied him though. Because of yeah, that. but then they found out that he, you know, batted for the other teams. On the other <laughs> you side. can't say that anymore. Oh, wait, wait, you wait, cannot wait, say that anymore. Can. Okay, right. he batted so for, for different the, teams. For the, for the politically correct version of this, <laughs> go somewhere else. <laughs> No, no, he played for uh, different teams in cricket. You told me that. <laughs> he played for the Bombay Ducks and then he, he played for the Roasters. We played didn't for he? the Hindu Cultural <laughs> Society. That was the best one. Anyway, enough uh, about Paul Curran. Right. Yes, enough about Paul Curran. We're going to keep it short and sharp this week. So last week we ended with doing the conference, which was our make or break moment. And then that took us into the growth period that we've been lucky enough to have. Let's talk about that. Why do you think that after that conference where we were literally the skin of our nose surviving, the business was running out of money and we pulled it off. That became the moment that took off. Was it just relief? No, I think it was a mindset thing. So you know, I've talked about mindset yeah. before and I think the critical thing, um, it was such an undertaking to do. With only four of us, about four, four staff. Yeah, and, yeah. We, and we freelance. And, and actually, give, give Dorky Paul his due. Yeah. He, he was there and yeah. there some other weird and wonderful characters. Yeah. However... You and I, having pulled that off, realised that we could probably do anything. We then yeah, had I suppose a, that was a We then thing. had a client who came and said, that was a great conference, can you help us with uh, these awards? Yes. Uh, which was excellent, because effectively we took on board something that we hadn't even thought about. No, that's right. And we created uh, the Energy Life Consultancy Awards, the yeah. Telcos now. And I just think that we mentally um, thought... We can do anything. Yeah, but it was really weird because we did a conference, which was, in a, in a way, we were quite boring, but slightly different. Either we started with video, but we did a linear conference, didn't we? That yeah, first one, yeah, which yeah. was we did a one very room. standard. Yeah, conference. one room. You come in, you listen to someone, next change. Then there's a coffee break and all that. Yeah. And then we then did awards, and we knew nothing about awards. No. But I suppose when we went for that briefing meeting, uh, and we said, look. They said, can you do some awards? And we came up with all these things that we'd sort of pulled out. I don't know why. We just seemed, well, I certainly remember thinking, oh, yeah, we can do this, knowing that we had never done awards. Yeah, but we hadn't done the conference and we'd pulled off the conference. Yeah, and I think so that... So that's what I'm saying is I think mentally we shifted from actually we can't do these things to actually we can do anything. But also I suppose we thought we don't need any help to do it, did we? Because we, yeah. remember, we said, yeah, that's exactly the thing. <laughs> yeah. We were like, oh, yeah, we'll just yeah. go and do it. Yeah. And we've been very uh, fortunate that Phil, big Phil, shout out to Phil Healy, who's worked with us for years. So Phil came on board, and Phil has done all of our production, and we, we met him, and he, he got the idea of some stuff. And then I suppose we were very lucky. I think the key to our growth period over those couple of years was that we'd started... We'd got to know some people in the sector and we managed to get them to trust us, to be things like judges and add integrity yes. to it. And yeah. all of that was really, you know, you did a lot of that finding people, didn't you? Yeah. That was, I think, quite tricky for us to begin with because they didn't know who we were. Yeah, but also, as I said, I think the conference put us on the map. We had, uh, mentally, we were going from thinking, oh my God, that's going to take the company out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> four days away, um, to taking the company out to where it's like, wow, we pulled that off, yeah. to actually here's another great opportunity. That great opportunity gave us a real impetus for um, revenue growth as well. So yeah. there was a revenue growth, there was a personal growth. <laughs> we talked about, how, have we personally grown? We have, both personally grown, but yeah. as I said, I still think it comes down to absolutely mindset. And then we could also take on uh, more people if we wanted yeah, to. Yeah, and I suppose we, we, the thing that the conference did was that, you know, 
Uh, Pre is still the last membering uh, of that gang of four, not the, uh, uh, if you're old enough to remember the SDP <laughs> gang of four, but there was Pre, there was Vicky, Chris, and Simon, and then you and me, yeah. right? And then we had some freelancers. But we managed to pull off a conference of 400 people with just four staff members, which people couldn't believe. And then we did the awards. And instead of doing what anyone would do, which is just a normal award, we decided to do it in two venues yes. with a boat, yes. right? And go and do mad things, which I suppose, because we, we had done that, I think you're right. We Something flipped in our brains to say, these aren't, oh, we're going we're gonna to fail. These are challenges we can rise to. Yeah, yeah. And then we, well, I don't think we ended up doing well. Was, 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 failure is going to be another yeah. episode. But I don't believe that actually you pretty much, in fact, even a failure, you learn from it. Um, oh, you learn from most from and, failures. Yeah, and actually most things aren't a failure. They're just a learning experience. Now, that's a really positive way of looking at it. But I think if you look at any successful business person, that's what they look at. They, mm. In fact, how many times have we had, we've made mistakes so that have cost <laughs> no, us no. lots of money. Yeah. Okay? I, I can then mention two, one for you and one for me. Mm. And also staff members who've made big mistakes. Mm. You know, like we lost a, fil a, you know, a film tape, oh, God. God, which, which cost us so dearly. Mm. Um, the actual film tape was about a tenner, but the actual footage and the, the grief we had with the client oh, yeah. it cost us thousands. And what did we do with that staff member? We said, stay, you've learned from that, and if you ever do it again, we will get rid of you. <laughs> But that's, the, but that's a better way of looking at it. So that was a no, failure, but yeah. it was a failure that actually was a useful thing for us to do. I think the other thing that I suppose drove the growth was that we got confidence that people believed in us. Yes. Because there's one thing about having an online platform, which is you, you, you look for readers and, you know, we just had our you best figures. You have no figures. connection with you, them. But you don't have any no. connection. But when you actually saw, I remember that time, I suppose the, the, the moment I had <laughs> gone to the loo because I was nervous before the event, came out the loo, I was like, oh my God, who the hell are all these people here? What the heck? They're here for our hits. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, actually, Chris Foden, thank you very much. Chris. Yeah. But, and then when we did the awards, it was packed. Yes. And then we realised that we had an engagement. And I think this is the funny thing. For not all businesses have that moment where you have an engagement with your, with your cl uh, clients. Mm. Because, you know, you might just do a, a retail business that's completely online. Yeah. And it's just the numbers. But I suppose in the industry we are, which is, I suppose, a services industry, that feedback of human feedback, which is, oh, I liked your event, that was good. Yeah. I suppose for us, that gave us more ambition to do different things. Yes. What about the kind of trying to grow the business with, you know, more products? We really struggled with creating stupid ideas that never came to be, didn't we? No, How many things we experimented yeah, with? Yeah, yeah, but again, I come back to that there's almost no such thing as a bad idea. Um, and in fact, I'm sure we've had iterations of ideas and, and then effectively iterations of either services or products. And you try them, mm. you know, and they either work or they don't work. Um, I mean, you know, <laughs> we, had a we, lot that we, didn't we work. set up Energy Live News thinking it'd be totally online, and yeah. and and it hasn't been. We've we've done very well out of the offline stuff, which is the events. However, uh, and I think that's because the energy industry loves face to face, loves events. However, it, it's been behind the curve regarding uh, online stuff, and I think that's going to change. I think from a digital perspective, uh, things are going to really change. You only got to look at how much is digital now. One of the things that we found as we started to grow was obviously you uh, look at money in a very different way. Yes. Uh, for a staff, we, we could play the staff, couldn't we, Pre? Finally, you got some salary. <laughs> we went through, I think this is actually worth pointing out. We had brilliant staff uh, at the beginning who took yeah, the gamble. They're, they're rubbish now. They're rubbish now. <laughs> no, no, I'm talking about at the beginning. They, they had to trust us and we... We didn't pay ourselves, but we paid them. But sometimes months were like, yeah, you're going to get paid. You'll get your expenses or whatever. What, and squeaky, it was squeaky bum time. Yeah, it was squeaky bum time. Um, but then I suppose once we'd got, they sort of grew with us uh, and took on challenges as well. And I think this is the, the one thing I'd really say that um, for anyone who's hiring young people, people always think, oh, I'll hire people that are, kind of got all these qualifications or all these things, or you hire people who are older, perhaps, yeah. or you, you, you think you're going to have to trust something. 
we've had, I put 99.9% .9 brilliant success rate with young people. And they came in and they've run with it all. Yeah. Uh, and I do think that one thing, if you're listening from, you know, and you're a younger person, you know, don't feel that business isn't for you. You can go into any business. And employers out there, think about it. Because we, we got, you know, we never managed to get an older person that would sell for us. No. No, have we? Uh, and I've been very lucky that all the reporters and production staff have all generally been very young and they've really stepped up to the plate. And I think this, this thing about what skills you need when you're trying to grow, people not often think, oh, you've got to go and get someone experienced. But you don't have to, do you? No, I mean, we've used the apprentice schemes yes. very well. And so the apprentice scheme's been fantastic. Who, who when we've had... We had Ash. From, yeah, and we've had... We had George, we had yeah. Becky, Alex. Yeah. So yeah. both business administration mm. and also the production unit... Um, Although, George, how much work he did, we don't know. Georgie. <laughs> That's very unfair on George. <laughs> he did some. <laughs> um, but I think the, you, it's actually, you talked about the money side of it. Yes. And the difference. So the, uh, the thing I always remember is the minute we started making money, I stopped doing the VAT. <laughs> you don't know. Yeah. How big, I mean, that used to cost me two or three days every yeah. quarter. Because we could think, finally afford the accounting. Yeah, but two or three days a quarter, you think, oh, that's not a lot. It's one day a month. But actually, one day a month, that was one day selling time. Yeah. And I'd have been better. You know, if I was going to look back now, I'd say, actually, I would have paid for the accountant to do it straight away. But, I mean, we're, uh, you know, although we're quite technophilic in some ways, we're also Luddites. I mean, there are things like those... Technophilic? You mean technophobic? No, technophilic. We use technology. We're quite good with technology. Oh, I was seeing that sense. Yeah, oh, yeah so yeah, we've, yeah. we've been invested in it. Yes. Uh, but we are Luddites in some ways because you could have used something like a... Nowadays, there's QuickBooks and there are... Yeah, that's true. There are yeah. things, but you, yeah. you did it the old-fashioned way. Um, budgeting was an important part of growth. And... So one thing that happened for us was that we had, uh, we've mentioned him many a time, Mark Dickinson. So Mark Dickinson, who runs a very successful, several businesses, um, he was interested in us and he came along when we just started to turn around and he said, look, guys, I'd like to come in. And that was a quite an interesting thing because I saw that as, wow, here's a businessman who thinks that we're not idiots. Uh, no, I think he thought we were we idiots. We were idiots. He might have us out. <laughs> no, I think he did think we were idiots. Yeah. He just thought, I might be able to straighten them out. And, he, and, he and unfortunately, failed. he didn't, bless him. <laughs> no, but he did a really good thing. So uh, you talk about budget. I don't see yeah. this budgeting. I think it's financial acumen or financial... Planning. Uh, um, ri uh, rigor. 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 That's, yeah. it. That's the word I'm... Rigor is the word I'm That's the thing. I mean, he, he brought that in, didn't he? Yeah. So we... I mean, I now have... You, you get from me every week a... A spreadsheet which basically has an index number on it and right. we know exactly where we are in terms of uh financially and that's a really big thing it was massive it simplif uh, yeah massive because it, it simplifies so i know if we're gonna have a cash flow issue and i know if we're in dire straits or not not to obviously bring up the 80s pop band um sorry dire straits mind if i'm uh, <laughs> oh very good hey. um so i think from that point of view, that's been, you know, it, whatever Mark did for us, that one thing paid for everything that he did. Yeah. You know, because it, 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 I still, I still use it. I mean, it's five years on since we started it. And that, I've got, in fact, the spreadsheet that I've got goes back that far. Um, and I know the parameters we sit in. I mean, I'd like those parameters to be able to increase, but... They are, you know, they, they are a really good way of but, us understanding what's going on. But for people, I mean, there are people who've got MBAs and all, they know all about that stuff. But, but for people who are ordinary like us who fall into business, this bit of growth, when you start to make success, yeah. I think that's the hardest bit is the fiscal discipline of budget. <coughs> and to be fair to you, you've always been like, let's hold some money back because yeah, yeah. we've got bill, bills to pay. You know, we, and you know, go, oh, let's get some more camera gear. Let's get all of this. No, and no. You, you've got to think months in the head. And the other thing is I think you need to have to grow is real responsibility for your staff. Yeah, but you need responsibility for the business. Okay? Yeah. And the staff are part of that business. Yeah. But the, the trouble is, is that we get paid, uh, we're big enough to have to worry about VAT. Yeah. Um, so the, the, the issue with VAT is you get given all this lovely money by your clients mm -hmm. and then 20% of it or 18% of it, whatever the figure is, is actually money you're going to give to the government. Mm. It's really collecting. annoying. It's really annoying because I sort of think, oh, we've got loads of cash, and then, oh, yeah, I've got VAT bill to pay. But that's why the numbers, again, go back into that financial rigour, uh, that index number, 
does include that. How, how important do you think that lesson was about financial planning for our growth? Because I don't think you could, you could always just go, I'm just going to keep selling, yes. right? And it doesn't matter what I'm doing, I'm just bringing money in, and yeah. that's how I'm growing. Yeah. But I think what Mark taught us to, is to look ahead for yes. things that could happen and things that could <clears throat> just affect you like that, the, the crisis well, we, moment. We've just had a recent example. We have. So, you know, we, we're wondering about our events and whether they're working or not. And, and I, was, I was thinking, oh, one of them's not working particularly well when I did the numbers. And, I, and the numbers aren't as good as they were, but they're not that bad, actually. No. So when, when you look at it from that perspective, you think, oh, yeah, there's still, there's still life in that. Um, and what we might need to do is refresh. But it is really interesting. Always come back to the numbers. I think numbers are important. You know, so we, we look, at, look at the reporters. They do so many stories a day. And that rigour for them means that they, they know what they've got to do. However, they're also, um, we know that there's a certain amount of productivity coming about. And that's just made a big difference. Look at our good, figures on Google yeah. have, have really shot up because we've got a constant amount of, of um, uh, uh, stories coming out. Did, did selling get easier once we'd started to grow? Um, Yes, because obviously we started doing things that that growth was part of also effectively we were doing free marketing for ourselves with the events. Mm -hmm. um, but did it open more conversation because we'd done successful things? That yes, we went that, yeah, so, yeah. That, so that's it. People, it, it's like why do people support Arsenal or Man United or Liverpool mm -hmm. rather than Leighton or Leighton Orient? Greatest team. <laughs> Greatest team, mate. Uh, at least they're playing red and white. Yeah. Um, but the reason why... Uh, people follow the more successful teams is they want to be associated with success. So we were seen as successful. So people go, oh, I want to be part of that. Um, then as you get more successful, then you get the, you know, we have this, we have a lovely British trait of, oh, well, we're like knocking the people that yeah, are doing well. Yeah, of course. But that's a different thing. That's a, and I, I'd rather have that than the, I'm not talking to you because you're not no, but, successful. But, but, you know, for someone who grows a company, um, and don't get me wrong, we haven't grown super fast, right? There's internet companies that grow rapidly in, in months and double, triple turnover. We're not that kind of business. We've grown very, very slowly. But there are two things we're, I'm proud of. One is we've never been in debt. Yep. And two, we've never borrowed any money. No. Why have we not borrowed money? Well, I think we quite like a bit of our own control. Um, we probably could have gone and got some funding. Mm-hmm. And the trouble with funding is, is that you're then either got a bank or a financial institution or a or set a of person. angels or person that are then saying, you said you'd do this for me. Mm. Um, and I think we've always liked having more control for ourselves. Yeah, I think the thing is, you know, often you feel that you have to borrow money to grow. And we had to look at it. But some of the things that we could have done are vanity projects, right? We could have borrowed money to get a office in central London. Yeah, thank God right? we didn't do and that. Then we no. did. And we, we, we did flirt with the idea once. Yeah. Uh, you know, we tried different IT projects that were stupid, you know, because oh, of yeah, a certain, I mean, a certain on, person, yeah, we'll oh come on to that in, in another episode. But we invested in this stupid technology that was pointless. And we, it was a vanity thing that cost us 25 grand. We made mistakes on doing investment in, in other projects that we thought would grow the business. But I suppose the, the saving grace is we always said we're not going to borrow from the bank because we don't need to, and we've been very fortunate. And I'm not saying that's the wrong thing. Some businesses have to borrow from the bank. No, but also to to, but some people would probably look at us and go, you should have borrowed money, you yeah. should have speculated to accumulate. Leveraged, yes. yeah, Or leveraged or whatever words, you know, either use an old cliche, use whatever the financial terms. And there's a, you know, sometimes I think we both think, oh, maybe we should have done that. But it, it depends... Where, what your mindset is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that's, I suppose, uh, yeah. I mean, I think we both like control. Yeah, I just think that, you know, I, I, I think the first episode we talked about risk, and, you know, we do take risk, but I think we're both that kind of, we'll take a risk, but we're not going to be stupid with the risk. And I always thought, if you do take money from the bank, then you've got to have a plan. And <laughs> that's probably where we fail, because if you're going to borrow money from someone, say 100 grand or 200 grand to grow your business, they're going to say, what are you going to do with it? And if someone said that to us, we'd have said, well, I don't know, quite a nice office. <laughs> and, yeah. you, you, so I think borrowing money for growth is very important if you're really... But you've, the, got, to have that, a, you, but you've got to need to know what the plan exactly. is. And, the, and, we've, and let's be frank, we set up this business without a business plan. Yeah. <clears throat> we've always just had a, a notion of it's going to be Energy Live News, it's a platform, it's going to be this. 
Um, and it's almost been sheer force of will or vision mm. that's got us to where we are. But actually, if you said, what was the plan? There wasn't actually a plan. Um, so we've done this <laughs> without a plan. Yeah. So for us to go and get half a million, say, yeah. to go and grow as further, we would really have to think about a plan. And that could be, that that's mean, not, that that's not, not I don't mean that's us. So we, that we, we, us. Would, we would actually have to take somebody no. in that Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. And that's the other part that I suppose when people look at growth, they think about, do you bring someone in? And um, we've, we sort of had that a couple of times, hasn't quite worked out on both occasions. Um, I think it's very difficult for you to grow a company with someone coming in externally because particularly if they're bringing money, you're right, that you'd have to listen to what they've got to say. Yeah. And that might be not with your vision as, as a business owner yourself. But also I think you, you if you're a very kind of, uh, meticulous person who knows pathway of year one, year two, year three, then you can definitely convince someone, I'm going to do this and this is what I'm needing yeah, yeah, money you for. Can always go, hey, for there's us, plenty we, of money out there. Absolutely. But for us, we grew this organically. And let's just do the, the basic figures of how we've gone so people can get an idea. So we started in 2010, and I don't think we made a turnover of more than a hundred grand until not probably. sure I want to have all no, of this no, out there. I, I, I'm I, just I, putting it out I'm just putting okay. out how the the figures grew so let's just say about a hundred odd grand the first couple of years right and then it didn't grow at all for ages it was static and then we had a bit of an uprise and then finally last year we had our best ever figures where we got to the amazing fact of a million turnover now a million turnover is for a business of our size I think is quite remarkable Weirdest thing, and this may be the growth mindset, is I wasn't that surprised we got to a million. But if you told me that five years ago, I would say, are you mad? Yeah. So incremental growth isn't a bad thing. Everyone thinks that you have to have success, like you've got to make money very quickly. For us, we've done it very, very slowly. No, I mean, there'll be, there'll be plenty of businesses out there that are smaller than us, or there'll be people that are working on their own, or there's just a couple of them. And they'll be happy with where they're at. Correct. But they'll be going, God, what are you moaning about? You're doing fine. Mm. Um, and then we, but I, I suppose, again, it's the human condition, which is. You're looking up. You're always looking up. Yeah. I'm always looking yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. So I'm always comparing again. You know, we meet some really cool. Absolutely. Entrepreneurs and business people, and you sort of think. <laughs> we're tiny. We're, we're, I, I want to be like them. And, and maybe that's part of the shtick, which is you're always constantly looking to, to move forward and grow. But I, 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 what, I, what I feel that is important to say is that you don't have to grow super quickly. Uh, it's up to you, right? When you're running your business, it's your business. You might be the sort of real, you know, 70 hours every day, 100, you know. 70 hours every day? Yeah, well, your right. maths were never good, No, were they? they are. There are people who work 70 hours every day. They feel like that. <laughs> they work themselves to the ground. You know, they... Uh, invest, they mortgage, they borrow, they get people in and they, they're on a super fast pathway to growth. But you can grow a business steadily. But let's go back to those stats you came up with in the first ever episode, yeah. which is the number of, right, so we're in the top 4% top in the 4%. UK, top 4 or 5% in the on, UK, on the turn okay, over, yeah. where we are with mm -hmm. our money. So if you actually look at somebody that was at a 10 million turnover, yeah. they are probably in the top 1%. Yeah. And then when you start if looking that. at corporates oh. there was it was Z zero, 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 one. Yeah, whatever, like whatever the number was so actually you've got to you've got to start being to an extent a little bit realistic i mean i do believe that mindset is really critical for what we do uh, for any business uh, for yes. any person that's running a com company okay because if you go oh we're going to do two million pound turnover well, why don't you want to do three million? Because actually, you've <laughs> yes, already constructed. If your brain has already got two million in its head, it mm. ain't going above two million. No, it's, yeah? it's very true. So if someone goes, "I'm going to have a ten million pound turnover company," they're more likely to get it than the person who says, "I've got five million. Yeah, I, I want to do five million. That mindset. It's like it's like saying. But um, we never had that. Sorry. We never had. We're going to earn this much money. No, or no, we we're going to. No. So what what I'm trying to get at is. You're damn right. There are people there, and we've met so many of them who know, I'm going to build this and sell within five years. We've yes. met loads of people who've said yes, that. Yes, that's true. I've got my figures. Yeah. I've got yeah. my plan. And I'm really, really, uh, <laughs> I admire those no, people. I'm in awe of those yeah, people. We're in awe, actually. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But, those sort of people, yeah. But for us, what I'm trying to say is that if you're a bit like us, who've sort of bumbled along, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that I'm, is literally... Bumble's a really good word. <laughs> we bumble along. 
you can grow. Do you know we're really not helping the selling yeah. this company? <laughs> <laughs> Honesty <laughs> is, is the best policy. But you can bumble along and you can be, and you know, you could be successful. At oh, a can I use one of my really good cliches? God, do we have okay. to? We haven't so got long. Success, Go success is not the destination, it's the journey. Oh, God, I hate that sort of... <laughs> Oh, God, exactly, Johnny. It's the worst thing to but, say, isn't it? But actually, there are lots of people that, in the end, it's not about where they get to. It's about the fun and the, yeah. the stuff they've done on the way. And, uh, the, and the actually, we've is, had a great journey. Yeah, actually... The, you, if, I've if, done yeah. things with you that yeah, I never thought I'd ever do. Don't, don't say that. Yeah. <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> I don't, that. The Hampstead Heath was, was, was very eye-opening. <laughs> <laughs> Pre, don't, don't even look. We, look, Pre's our little uh, moral compass here, and she's going to pull that up. I think that's a good place that's to start right to now. Stop. What, Hampstead Heath? Uh, Hampstead Heath is a good place to start. <laughs> so, if you like visiting Hampstead Heath, if you, if you don't like visiting Hampstead Heath, if you're just like uh, spreading, pressing buttons and saying subscribe, subscribe now you before we do it. Maybe you've got to smash, smash it. it. And this time, I've got to do this thing. Hang on, hang on. No? How do I do it? There. Is that right? What's that? Is that right? Oh, okay, hang on. Is this dabby? Dab I'm dabbing. Or? He's dabbing. Oh, what about do Peely Peely? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe now. We'll be back next week. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. See ya.